Good morning, everybody. It's Peter here from AJS, or also representing our sister business, GNA Warpertons in New Zealand. And once again, we're taking you into a jewelers workshop somewhere in Australasia. And this week, we have the pleasure of going to sunny Geelong and the even sunnier Chris Sherwin. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Peter. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Yes, yeah, great to have you back on board, Chris. And I said it was sunny, and I'm right. It is. You've got the sun streaming in. There we uh, over your team shirt. We've got our team shirts on today. Team shirts. That's right. Sun yeah. is actually just breaking through the cloud, but that's all right. We'll call it streaming. <laughs> the, main thing, the main thing is we're streaming to everybody else, which is great. We are live streaming on Facebook, indeed. Yeah. Now, yeah. Chris, uh, today's presentation is called "Make." Uh, we're going to make a cylindrical bayonet catch for a chain or pearls. Yeah. Would you like to tell us a bit more about what we're going to get up to? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Peter. Welcome, everybody. Uh, yeah, we're going to make a cylindrical catch. So, as it sounds, a cylinder. Uh, we're going to make it la larger than life, so 15 millimetres in, in length. Uh, it's a tube, so made from chenille, and it's going to have a little bayonet fitting, which goes inside, and that would bring together two halves of a pearl necklet or a chain. And uh, I'll show you how to put that together today. The smaller version is this one here, which is a very, very tiny uh, version. I'm very lucky to have this little sample, uh, which came from an apprentice about 40 years ago. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to doing that with you today. Excellent. So, uh, Chris, where do we start? Well, uh, Probably the best way to start is to have some chenille. So uh, you can purchase chenille from various suppliers, but I've got some chenille here, which measures uh, five millimeters out of diameter. Uh, you could get four mil, you could get three mil, but I'd recommend you start with a slightly larger size to start with. So five millimeters, and it's about a 0 0.7, 0 0.8 wall thickness. Point, it's actually less, it's about 0.6. Uh, so that will give you uh, cut off a nice length of that. I'm sure you can use that in any quantity. And we're going to chop that off into 15 mil length, which I've already done. So I've cut off a 15 millimeter piece. And we're going to put on to that. So really the catch has two ends. It has the body and it has the bayonet. And we're going to set up the body of the catch so it will lock in the bayonet and I'm going to show you how to make the bayonet because in catch making you're always working with springs and tension uh, and you know very fine fitting. So the the body as I said is 15 millimeter tube and onto that tube we have to have two ends. Uh, we have an end which has a little loop on it. Um, and I'm going to show you that that's the little loop which is going to connect to our chain, and that's fixed on a little disc, and I've actually kept this disc proud. And on the other end of the catch, there's going to be like a washer on the end with an opening. So, it's again, it's another disc, slightly proud of the chenille, and it has a hole in it, and into that hole will go the bayonet, which is the fitting the fitting mechanism itself. So that's our little catch end, and that will go into the tube like that. And you can see that it also has a loop on the end, has a little thumb, thumb piece, and has a little notch on it. You can just see a little notch there. I'll just turn it around. You can just see the notch at the top of that thumb piece. And that will go into our catch, push in, and lock into that circular end. So the circular end is now blocked, but that's the bayonet fitting into the circular end. So two components, a tongue or a bayonet and a tube. So, so when do you most uh, often use this particular fitting then, Chris? Uh, well, I do various forms, Peter. So if I'm if I'm doing a chain and I, I can show you another type of catch. I mean, a lot of people use uh, 
sort of a more of a box style catch, a side snapping catch. Show you this one. This one is basically catches work on a similar basis. This is basically a disc. So it's a it's it's a bracelet. Yeah. And this one, rather than a circle or a, or a, or a cylinder, this is actually a disc. And it's a little bit hard to see because of the light, but there is a little notch. See that notch there? Yep. That notch allows this side snapping bayonet to go in, into the notch. So that go, gets introduced in the notch. I'll just start that off. Uh, I'll just turn it this way. There you go. And when that's pushed in, it locks in. And, and you wouldn't even know that catch was there. Yeah, that, well, that's part mm. of the idea of the design is you, you make it so mm. it fits in with the rest of the design. Mm. And then you need your fingers to grab onto the top of it, squeeze the two ends together. Quite a nice tight one, this one. And then it releases. And if you look really carefully, I'll just show you there are two little notches on that catch. Let's see if I can get into a bit, of, bit better focus. Doesn't want to focus, it wants to focus on the background. There, there are two two little notches on the catch, and those notches are what locks into the the, the disc. Yep. So all of these catches are similar bracelets, necklets. They're all based on one side meeting another, because in a string of pearls or in a chain, you want the two sides to meet, but you need that physical connection. And I guess normally people would buy a little parrot clasp or a little so-called Cartier catch. Some some type of spring-loaded catch is the cheaper way to put together uh, a bracelet or a necklet. But if you're hand-making and you want something a bit special, you've got to make it. Indeed, that's what, yes. That's what we're all about. Mm. So in this case, it's going to be a cylinder. It's probably the easiest type of catch to make because... Uh, we can draw out some half round wire, which I've done. So with your trusty draw plate, you pull out a half round wire, and if you bend a half round wire in in together at uh, 360 degrees, you bend it back on itself, two half rounds make a round. Is that right? I hope, Sounds hope right to me. My geometry is about right. So when I when I bend that half round wire up to make the catch, I'm going to end up with a round end, and that's exactly what goes into that round hole on the cylinder. So that's why it's the easiest to make. If you if you do a catch like the one I just showed you, you've got to have a rectangular opening. You could use square wire. You've got to have a square opening, but obviously a round opening. You could just drill it and make a round hole, and you've got an easier opening. So let's get stuck into it. We've, we've chopped up our little 15 millimetres of tube and I'm going to need two ends. So one is going to be a washer end with a hole in it and the other one's going to be a, a simple disc with with a loop on it. So that's that's the other end of the catch. So let's solder together. Our, what we'll do is actually, well, I'll solder on the, the, the end that has the hole in it. So to make one of these, you obviously need to get a disc cutter or, you know, I've got, I've got a very, very nice disc cutter from AJS, which is uh, uh, about 10 millimetres down to about 2 millimetres. And I cut a little circular disc, mark it out, drill it, and then to make it a bit more interesting, I'm going to have a slight dome on my disc just to give it a bit of shape and body. So I'm going to use my trusty doming block. And I'm going to take that disc and I'm just going to give it a nice curvy end. Curve that up. Get my little disc out of the dining block. Yeah, and now I've got a lovely disc with a, a lovely sort of cur curved curved end on it. Nice little curve. And I've actually pre pre drilled this, so there's a there's an opening already. I don't want to drop it. There's a little drill hole. 
and it's got that lovely, lovely curve shape to it, which is going to fit onto the end of my cylinder. Certainly adds a touch of class, Chris. It does add, add a touch of class. Mm. Otherwise, your jewellery is mm. just very straight up and down and mm. super symmetrical. So let's solder this on. So I pre-drilled the hole. I'll, I'll sort of talk my way through this. I pre-drilled the hole just to make it a bit easier to finish off. I'm going to cut some solder. There we go. I've got two tubes here, so I've got two to pick from. Oh, a little bit of flux to my disc. And I'm going to be soldering this so that the convex part of the disc is facing down. I could do it the other way around, but I'd prefer to do it this way. And I'm going to flux my tube. Pop those out of the way so that I get that set fire to the workshop. Some flux on the tube. And then I'm going to bring the two together. Let me sit up nice and straight. So I'm using. Um, Seamless chenier, which you can buy from your metal suppliers, mm -hmm. but you could actually make your own chenier. So, Chris, I imagine you putting the disc on top of the tube, but uh, your experience obviously shows you do it the other way around. <laughs> That's all right. Just, just whatever technique works. Uh, the flux mm. is fairly sticky, so I'm just. Yeah. Just battling to get it just a little bit straighter because I don't want it to topple over. And I want to get a reasonable alignment, Peter, because I've already pre-drilled a hole yeah. in the center. So I want that hole to be reasonably straight. Yep. Yeah. So I'll just this is very hot, but I'm going to hold it up to the camera. I'll just uh flick over. Got me over there. Here we go. There yep. we go. So you can see the tube, the disc is just on top of the chenille. chenille has gone quite black now because I'm, I'm about to solder. But you can see it's uh, convex on the outside, like a little mushroom, basically. Yep. And I'm going to sit that down on my mat carefully and apply some solder. The reason I like to use a slightly larger disc than the chenille is because I can clean up afterwards. If I made it exactly the right size, I don't have an edge to put my solder onto. There's definitely a method in my madness. Yeah. And as I say, it, it gives you something to clean up afterwards. You've got an edge to work to. So I'm just going to hold that gently. So we've got a few viewers out there, Chris. So I'll just invite them if they'd like to introduce themselves by saying good day and maybe let us know where you're from. That'd be great. Yeah, welcome everybody. There we go. It's one nice little tack. Oh, it's nice and straight too. I'm happy with that. Just going to apply a little bit more solder. There we go. Applying the heat down to the base so it doesn't just rise up the tube. Perfect. Yeah, 
just a, just a fractional centre, but very close, within five hundredths of a mil. I'm going to cool that off. And we'll put that into the pickle. So this is the actual catch end. This is the end that I pre-drilled. I'm going to go back in there now with the ball burr and just move that drill hole right to the centre. And while that's happening, it's in the pickle, we're going to start making our catch end, the bayonet. So the bayonet is, as I said, half round wire. And there are a number of ways of doing that. This, this piece, uh, I've actually forged the end a little bit. So if you look at that end, you'll see it's like a little paddle. And hold it back a little bit. There you go. So there's a little paddle end on it because I've forged that out as opposed to the other end, which is sort of dead, dead flat and cut off. And it is half round wire. So just, just turn that so you, can, so you can see the half round on it. There's the flat end. And there's the, there's the curvy top on it. So I've just hit that with a hammer to forge it out. It's one way of making one of these. So I can then drill a hole and that would become my, I'll show you the one I've prepared before. This one is a soldered jump ring. So this is the ha same half round wire and I've soldered a jump ring on the end. So it's all perfectly round to start with. And that's where my pearl gimp, if I was gimping and I had a strand of pearls, everyone know what, I hope everyone knows what gimp is. Uh, you want so, to give a quick definition? Okay, so when you string pearls, they're strung on silk and they're knotted in between each pearl. Yep. And the silk that goes through each of the pearls then has to go through the catch because obviously you want to attach your pearls to your catch. And there's a little very, very fine spiral uh, wire that you buy called gimp and it allows the silk to go through the gimp and back through the pearls. And that, that wire, that protective coated wire, protects the silk from rubbing against that metal jump ring. So you've actually got metal against metal rather than metal against silk. Okay. Yep. So if you haven't, I probably should have got some gimp to show you what it looks like, but that's basically where you would attach your pearl strand to. Or if you're making a chain, you'd put a jump ring on there connecting this jump ring to your chain. So that's, that's the actual bayonet itself. It's a straight piece of metal at the moment. Uh, and I'm going to bend that up so that we end up with the double, the double half round, which becomes a circle, because that's actually the same material, but doubled over. Okay? Gotcha. So we've got our material. So some of the things that you have to do is you have to calculate and you have to think about how long that bayonet is because the bayonet cannot be so long that it just uh, comes out the other end of the catch. It has to double over. And when it goes into the catch, it can't be sticking out the end because we're going to have a little cap on the end there. Yep. So we have to actually work out the length of the bayonet. Uh, and also we have to think about the tension because these all work through uh, actual tension, the actual fold itself. It's important that this has enough tension to move. Just 0.1 or 0.2 of a millimetre makes all the difference, and that's what will make it catch in the end because it's actually locking in. So if I go back to my sample, the one that I've already finished, if I put that catch in i know it's got to be shorter than 15 millimeters because it's 15 millimeters of uh of tube so when i make up my my end my end piece i've got to come down around about seven millimeters or so i've made a little mark on this one and i'm going to bend it up on that little black line and and bend it back on itself so we use this one I'm going to get my parallel pliers. Just while you're getting your pliers there, uh, just say good day to Greg from Harvey Bay. Thanks for introducing yourself, Greg. Hope you're enjoying the show. Oh, welcome, Greg. I like Harvey Bay. It's a good spot. Gateway to Fraser Island. 
So uh, going to hold that in my parallel pliers there on, on the mark. And then I'm going to bend that back. So the two, the two flats meet each other when it's bent around. So I'm now going to bend that up carefully. Now, if you were working in gold, you'd probably bend this halfway and then you would anneal it because you're going to get a considerable amount of tension in gold. So I've now bent that up to 90 degrees. We can show that again, please, Peter. There you go. That's, that's now 90 degrees. That's my little uh, jump ring end. It's at 90 degrees, and that has to be short enough to fit into the bayonet without sticking out the end at the bottom there. So this will be sticking out at one end, the top, and I've got just enough room for it not to go all the way through. So I'm now going to bend that up fully. So 180 degrees, or yeah, I'm up 90, so I've got to double that. Going with the parallels. Bring that down a bit. And I'm bringing the two halves, the two straight sides together so that it makes a circle. Now, I'm not going to bend that all the way down because I want to create some tension here. So I'll show that again. I'm, I'm almost all the way around. A little bit of a gap between the two. That's the end where it curves and the two flat sides are coming together. What I need to do now is I'm just going to introduce a little bit of sheet metal into that up the top. And I'm going to squeeze the tip down. So if this was this was in gold, you would definitely have annealed that at the 90 degree mark. And the reason you do that is because the you'll create too much tension and the the bend will crack. So in silver, you've got enough softness to go that full 180 degrees and you'll have enough tension at the end to create the movement that you need. So just a little bit of advice here about what happens to the metal. I'm going to put a bit of little bit of metal at the back end and I'm going to squeeze down with my parallels to bring the, the front tip very tight. And, and what it what that does is it actually flicks the top up. You'll see that in a moment. There we go. And I'll just show you that with the piece of metal in it. I've got a little disc in the back there. There it is. And I'm going to pull that out now. So that disc was just keeping this top section open. And when I pull that out, you'll see that the bottom section is quite tight. See how I've squeezed it in there? And okay. And it wires out at the top. Yep. And this... This bit at the top is the is the bit that gives you the tension. So this is the bit when I squeeze it and release it, it will have the tension on it to, to lock the catch and then re-release. If I didn't have the metal in there, it would just be a straight join and it's not going to work. Mm. So you've got to have that sort of that that tension point. Just as I squeeze, you can just see it moving there and releasing, squeeze and release. And having this little flat section at the <laughs> bottom here gives you like a fulcrum, a leverage point, rather than just at the tip. If it constantly bends at the tip, it will also work hard and, and then eventually snap away. So you're creating a little flat area of about three or four millimetres for that fulcrum to um, disperse the tension, if you like. So I've now done that. Make sure that's nice and straight. And that's ready to go the next stage. So I'm going to take out my chenille from the pickle. Gas it out of that. Because I want to make sure that the catch works before I put the end on and seal it up. It's always good to have access. Right. 
So I've got to now open up this end with some ball burrs, which I'm going to do now. So it's just, just the right opening size for our bayonet. So it's one. When I when I open things up, I like to go just a step at a time, so I'm in control. So it's sort of a one one and a half mil ball burr, then a two two and a half mil ball burr, and just work my way up to around about around about three millimeters. It is. So make sure I'm on the right one, and go to the next one. Up to about two mils now. Go to two and a half and then three. And we'll have a we'll have a bit of a look. Two and a half. That's why you can see I've got my trusty selection of ball burrs. Because you do need them all. Mm, you've got a few. I've got a few, and they come in very handy. Okay. Just going to check my bayonet, see if it goes into that opening. And it does yet yeah, pretty well perfectly. But because of the leverage, the, the curve I've got on that, it won't lock in yet, which is which is good. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the burr off that. I'm just going to use a little heart burr. Um, that one should do. Do this by hand. Just put a heart burr inside those little heart burrs of the setting setting burrs. Got the burr off that, and I'm going to put an emery stick just over the end. Take the burr off the outside, and I'll show you that. So this is my catch end. So I'm very happy with this. So here now is my chenille. It's out of the pickle. We've opened up the hole at the back. So there's our riddle opening. And here's the finished bayonet. And that is fitting really nicely into that opening. And the tension starts to come on. Hold that down a bit. But it won't go all the way in until I start pushing hard. It's starting to get tension on it. And then it's harder to get out. So what I have to do now is on my actual catch, this is the finished one, I've got to cut that little groove. Because that little groove, I'll just turn this so you can see it. A little bit hard to do. Yeah, that little groove where the little thumb piece comes up on the handle, that little groove is the bit that locks in onto that washer. It actually locks in onto the disc that we put in there. So I'm going to get the one that we're making together. Here it is here. And this one won't go in because I've got to just refine this a little bit. This one's a bit too tight. So I'll just show you how to refine that. You're always going to have a little bit of leeway. Hopefully, when you've been making it up to do a bit some filing and get some shaping happening. You're going to get a little bit of distortion as you bend that half wire, half round wire up.
And that's what was stopping it going in, Chris. Yeah, that's right. That little bit of uh, buckling at the end where I've actually yeah. turned it 180 degrees on itself. Yeah. Uh, and the other catch, because it's a finished sample, I've been uh, doing a bit of emery work and have a silicon wheel over it, so it's pretty close to finished. And when you bend them up, they're not necessarily perfectly in alignment. You only have to be out by one or two degrees, and then it's not a perfect circle. This one's just slightly out of alignment, so I'm just going to give it a slight twist. I'm going to hit this one with a hammer a little bit. That'll help bring it around. Just be careful of jumping on the ends. Yeah, that's a bit better. And back in with an emery stick. But you could make your uh, catch a little sphere or like my other sample, the disc. Pretty well make any hollow shape that you want, as long as your catch is going to be the, the right length and will disappear into that little hollow form. And you can make it very decorative. But the important thing is to remember it's the two components coming together and having the tension, the correct tension on your finished bayonet. And that's just good, you know, planning and material handling that gets you there. So a good bayonet fitting is like a good murder mystery uh, novel, Chris. You need the tension. Yep, you need the tension there. Yeah. Even at the end, when the novel's over. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, That's nothing, worse than a, nothing worse than a catch that has no tension. It's very annoying. Yeah. And I remember when I was uh, a student myself and, uh, you know, doing too much soldering on things and, and then everything was soft again and then you hammer the end out and you try to create tension by, you know, tapping the end with a hammer and, before you knew it, the catch was lifeless. <laughs> but it is a challenge. It's you, you really do have to make a few to learn that. Uh, what not to do. What to do. You, you have to learn where the tension comes from and uh, yeah, how, how to sort of control the materials themselves. Yeah. What's the verdict? This is great. This is doing exactly what I want it to do. That's so what we I'll want to do here. The camera. So this has the straight end on it, and there's a little jump ring end. When I grab that, it pulls out, but it's got a, a firmness to it. It won't just flop off. As soon yeah. as I start pushing it, I, I know you can't see that, but I can feel the tension coming on, and that's what I want it to do, not just fall off. It's got to be under under some sort of tension. Yeah. So now we're sort of up to finishing that catch off. This is kind of the – this is the crux of the, the, the exercise, if you like. So now that I've got this tongue or this bayonet going in, what I need to do is create the notch that will lock that tongue – onto that disc. So that disc, which was about 0.8 of a millimetre, just measure that. Yeah, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.8 ish. This now has to have a notch on it to match that to lock in. And I also need to create a bit of a flick on that catch so that I can get my finger onto it and also the gimp from the pearls or a jump ring down through that 
um, jump ring. So it can't just come out straight. There has to be a little bit of a gap between the two. Otherwise, you can't operate with this piece. It just becomes too, too far too flat. So to do that, I'm going to get some nice fine pliers and I'm going to just gently bend while it's sitting inside the catch. I'm just going to bend up this one end that's going to be my finger piece and go a bit further out. And just a little bit further out. That should do nicely. So I've now flicked up that end so that we've got that curvature. It's coming out straight before because I need this little gap here. This little gap is going to allow the gimp to go through the jump ring. If you can't see the end of that jump ring inside between the thumb piece, this is the thumb piece that bit that your finger squeezes down on, then you can't make your connection to the next piece. Mm. So that's now got a lovely curve to it. And that will still go all the way in and pull all the way out. Just a nice, a nice sliding. Once I get onto that with a rubber wheel and some um, 1500 or 2000 emery, they'd love a beautiful sliding action to it. So two things left to do is I've got to cut my notch so this springs up and locks in on that disc. So it's just going to have a slight upward movement of about 0.1 of a mil and it will lock onto that disc and it won't just pull out. So what I do now, they're going really well for time. I'm going to push that catch all the way in to where I want it to go to. So I've just got the jump ring showing at the back, at the back of the disc. And that's as far as I want it to go in. And the beauty of not putting something on the end is I can actually see where the end of my catch is if I look at the other end. So I can actually look all the way in there. And you can just see, there it is. That's the end of my catch. When I pull it out, you can see all the way through, put it back in again. And that end is only about two millimeters from the end of the chenille. So if I wanted to now, I could remove that catch and I could solder my second disc onto the back so that it ends up like this piece here. So I've got a disc to solder on. And after I've soldered the disc on top, then I solder the jump ring on. And that's what that end will look like eventually, a disc with a jump ring. And then to go back again, that's my catch end, which is just basically uh, a uh, washer. So inside that washer, remember that that diameter hole is smaller than the, chenille, the diameter of the chenille. And therefore, when the spring, when the bayonet goes in there, it will be able to jump out towards the, the uh, inner diameter of the chenille. So that's my catch end, and that's my chain or pearl end, which I can now finish. But remember, if you do finish off now and you solder on a disc on the end, you've got to remember not to have the bayonet inside the catch, otherwise you will anneal the bayonet and it won't have any spring. So back to the bayonet. Let's pop the bayonet in. I'm not going to solder that end on because you can do that at home. I'm going to push that into the where it needs to go all the way in. And I'm going to mark very carefully with my scribe the thumb piece. And that's the very deepest point upon which I can cut with my saw frame. I can't go back further than that because the patch won't go in any further. Uh, yep, so I've got my mark. I'm going to take that catch out and I'm going to hold it in my trusty parallel pliers and I'm going to very, very carefully go in with my saw frame, 
just in front of that mark towards the tip. Just in front. And I'm going to go down about half a saw blade thickness. That's all I need. Then I'm going to guesstimate the thickness of my disc on the end, which I, I measured at about 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And I'm going to make a second cut. So about half the depth of the saw blade. And now I'm going to join the two cuts together. So I'll go into my first cut and I'm going to turn my blade 90 degrees. And I've made my notch. And this is where you really want to spend your time, get this right. So if you can make it too small, you can always come back and make it larger. Tidy that up a little bit. So this is the notch that connects to the disc on the end of the chenille. And there it is. Might hold it up, see if we can get the camera onto that. There's the notch. Put it down. There you can see it. A little bit hard to see. I know it's a tiny little thing. Got it. <clears throat> yep. See that little notch there? Try to get it down in the darkness here. And that's the, there it is. That's the little notch that's going to go into the catch. So let's just see if this is going to work. Get my catch. And slide it in. Snap, perfect, locking in perfectly. You know, it just needs a slight adjustment. It's loosening just a little bit too easily. It's almost there. I think I just need a little bit, just a tiny bit more clean up because that's got to hold firmly. Otherwise your chain will fall apart. Okay. So, so what's the particular issue, Chris? Uh, just getting the, the the not only the depth, but also the width of that notch right. A lot of people go crazy and get, get a bit excited. You don't want your notch to be too wide because if it's too wide, the catch will be sloppy and it just won't work properly. It has to be okay. a nice, snug fit. And anyone who makes a lot of catches will tell you it's got a snap. That's often why they're called snaps. Got a very fine escapement file here, nice square escapement you can use. Saw blade's pretty good, but the escapement will help finish it. Very close. And the last thing I'm going to do, I'll do that while I'm here, is I'm going to shorten that thumb piece. I don't want it to be ugly. I want it to be nice and fine. We've got a shout out from another viewer, Shant. So thank you for saying good day, Shant. Yeah, hello, Shant. S H A N T. I assume it's shan't but it could be shan't but um, anyway i'm sure they're happy to be welcome no matter what day, wherever they are yes. in the world we could be anywhere couldn't we peter well he said howdy so he could be in texas really yeah. could be. so i'm just rounding the end of my catch so it's comfortable to the finger and i'm going to put a little a couple of little thumb grips on for the fingernail 
And again, you do that with your trusty saw frame. I'm going to put three little notches. Two. Close to the end. I just use a fairly fine blade. Two two O should be fine. Maybe an O. That gives me something for my finger to grip into. I'll give that a quick rubber wheel and then we'll show everybody. Silicon wheel, there it is. Now it's a good idea to polish off emery and polish off nicely, then you'll get a nice sliding action. You don't want a lot of scratchy bits on catches, you want them to be quite fluid. And they'll flow well if they're nicely polished. And if it's nice to use, you'll uh, wear the particular piece of jewellery, don't you? Sorry, I missed you there, Pete. Oh, if it's nice to use, you'll wear the jewellery. If it's awkward, oh, you that's won't. right. Hmm. That's right. There's nothing worse than a clunky catch or something that grabs or doesn't lock in, or you you've got to be confident that your jewellery's safe and it's just easy to get on and off. And that's the uh, that's the task of being a, a jeweller, isn't it? You've got to have those hmm. communication skills and those actual skills to give the client confidence that um, they can wear it and it comes on and off well and they don't have to panic. So this needs a little bit more work. I've rushed it a little bit, but we're going okay for time. Find my catch again. Try that, make sure it works. Nice. Wow. Here we go. Cool. He's impressed. That's good. So here's our tube. We've only got the one end. You've got your other end to finish off, which has your disc and your jump ring for the other end of your pearl clasp. And this is our catch end. So we've got the disc at the end here, which the, the diameter of the hole is smaller than the diameter of the chenille, which means that the catch is going to lock in inside. We can introduce our bayonet. I've just cut, just so you can see them, I've just cut some little finger notches. A little bit hard to see. The light's a bit difficult. It's very hard for me to hold the the, uh, the piece to the camera. There they are. There are, there are, there are three little grooves at the very top yep. here, and that allows your fingernail to catch into those little grooves. You can just see them there so that when you're pulling back on the catch, you grip, and you can really see nicely now that notch that I've cut just up against my fingernail there, you can see the notch. So when I slide this in, that will go down to the notch, click in, that's now clicked in. And if I turn it around, you can see the little grooves there for my finger, fingernails to catch onto, and there's a little jump ring at the back to catch the pearl clasp. And there you have it. A little bit of a gap in between to allow a jump ring or a gimp the little notches for the thumb piece and the jump ring at the back. And there's enough tension on there that I've actually got to push down. See, you can see the notches now really beautifully there. Three little notches. See those? Yep. Looks great, doesn't it? Hang on. It does. Yeah. Get get folk, get get to come back to focus again. <laughs> and those little notches allow you, your fingernail to just jump in there. As soon as I put my fingernail down, it goes out of focus. But I can push down, squeeze it, and it allows the catch to come out, slides out, and you've got the chain or the pearls either side. So back in again, snaps in, and it's lovely and neat. That's what, that's what you're after. 
So there's your little Perfect. bayonet pearl clasp or, or a chain clasp. Just got to finish my end off. And when it is finished, it'll look like this one. Where's my second one? Oh, that's my original my original one. That's the uh, the chain end. That's the catch end. This one I haven't cut the finger notches on because it's just nice and smooth. But that one also, just turn it like that, squeezes down and clicks in and locks in onto that little um, washer on the end of our chenille. And there you have it. Nice little clasp. Great job, Chris. So I'd encourage everyone to give that a bit of a go and then make them smaller and smaller and smaller till you, you're confident that you've got the tension right and you, you've got a, a beautiful-looking object, works well for your customer, works well for you, then everyone's happy. Yeah, that is the big task, isn't it, getting smaller and smaller? It yeah. is, yeah. It's good yeah. to work a little bit larger, then you get used to the, the how the metal works, what makes the catch work. It's the understanding that you've got limitations, certain amount of movement you need to have, certain amount of tension on the metal you're working with, and when you know it works well, you can then get smaller and smaller and you're building confidence. So, so uh, I wish everyone well in, in making a... Nice little simple bayonet, cylindrical bayonet catch. And if, as I said, you can make barrel shapes, you can make discs, you could make a sphere, whatever works for you. There you go. You've uh, set everyone some homework. Let's hope they take you up on that, Chris. I hope so. Get to use yeah. all your tools and uh, in, in, enjoy <clears throat> making. Indeed. Now, speaking of uh, enjoying making and learning, uh, you actually conduct some little workshop. Uh, sessions in your workshop there don't you i do if you follow me on instagram chris sherwin design or you go into ajs you might see a little advert go up in melbourne um i happen to be obviously in victoria australia but uh if you'd like to perhaps attend a workshop and learn some more then i'm sure ajs will help you find me and uh otherwise you can find me on instagram yep yeah. well and your details are in this are posted in this video so Thank you, Peter. Kind of, yeah. 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 yeah no, so there's just an ongoing thing you offer where you can do bespoke sessions for people. Is that the story? Yeah, I, I teach mature age students. I have also teach students who are uh, learning at college who want to learn a little bit more, want to do a bit extra homework. I'm always good at giving people homework. Uh, <laughs> and uh, people who just want to return to the profession or brush up on some skills because, uh, like me, you're always learning. There's a lot to learn. You, don't, you can never know it all. So no uh, I'd welcome any inquiry. That'd be fine. Okay, so that's whether that's now or into the future as well, Chris. Yeah, I'd say after Christmas. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm talking about people who are watching this video in a year's time. Would in you still welcome time? an inquiry? <laughs> I'd, still, I'd still welcome an inquiry. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, no I hope you've enjoyed uh, AJS's demo today. And, uh, yeah, good luck with making catches. And by all means, uh, contact us if you need to. I'm sure we'd, we'd happily answer your questions. And thank you, Peter. Thanks to AJS. Beautiful. Thanks very much, Chris. See you next time. Okay. See, see you guys. Good making. Cheers. <laughs>